in the heart of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, nestled in the verdant embrace of forests and fields, is the historic town of Ironville. Notable for its rich veins of iron ore, ochre, and silica sand, this town was the industrial hub of the region in the 1830s. The smoky breath of its foundries and the ceaseless hammering of miners painted a picture of resilience, unity, and honest, back-breaking labor. As dusk fell, the din of the day subsided, giving way to the raucous camaraderie of workers at the local tavern, a beacon of respite amidst the toil. One regular patron of this lively establishment was a laborer named Jacob. Jacob was a simple, hard-working man, with a robust body weathered by years of mining and a spirit as resilient as the iron he worked with. Every evening, Jacob would promise his beloved wife, Clara, to be back home before the clock struck midnight. Yet, the intoxicating allure of the tavern and his comrades' company often held him captive well past his self-imposed curfew. One particularly crisp fall evening, Jacob had a few mugs too many. Feeling the effects of the strong ale, he boisterously proclaimed to his fellow patrons, I'll be in Columbia by the stroke of midnight, or I'll be in hell. As Jacob's words echoed hauntingly in the tavern, he staggered outside, his face flushed from the alcohol and his heart pounding with reckless determination. His loyal steed, sensing the urgency, waited anxiously. With considerable effort, Jacob managed to mount his horse, and like a whirlwind, they tore off into the night, their departure marked by a trail of dust and the laborer's defiant vow resounding in the air. The path to Columbia was not an easy one, particularly in the pitch darkness of the night. The road, shrouded in the shadows of the towering Pennsylvania trees, twisted and turned like a daunting labyrinth. The chill of the autumn wind cut through Jacob like a knife, and his eyes watered as he urged his horse onward, the fear of Clara's wrath giving him a courage that was, in reality, foolhardiness. The road was not kind to such rash haste. About a mile away from the tavern, where Ironville Pike met Norwood Road, a thick, low-hanging branch stretched across the path like a gnarled hand, hidden in the shadows of the moonless night. Jacob, blinded by his urgency and the ale, didn't stand a chance. In a horrifying instant, his head was brutally severed from his body by the merciless branch. His life, and that of his loyal steed, came to an abrupt end on that dark, winding road. The gruesome discovery the following morning shocked the townsfolk. The lifeless bodies of Jacob and his horse were a grim spectacle, a horrifying testament to a night of misjudgment and hasty bravado. The search for Jacob's severed head proved fruitless, adding an eerie finality to his tragic end. Following this macabre incident, an air of fear and uncanny mystery began to pervade Ironville. Whispered tales of spectral hoofbeats echoing through the night began to circulate. Residents spoke in hushed tones of a terrifying apparition, a headless horseman riding furiously towards Columbia, trapped in an endless replay of that fateful night. On particularly cold autumn nights, they say, if you find yourself near the intersection of Ironville Pike and Norwood Road around 11.45 p.m., you might bear witness to this horrifying sight. First, the distant echo of hoofbeats, growing louder with each passing second, would send a chill down your spine. Then, you might see the spectral rider, a ghastly silhouette against the darkness, racing towards an unreachable destination, forever bound to a promise never kept. To this day, the spectral presence of Jacob and his gruesome fate is a chilling narrative interwoven into the reality of Ironville. This chilling tale serves as a stark reminder of a man's unfulfilled vow and the terrifying repercussions of a promise broken, turning Ironville into a location straight out of a horror story. So if you ever find yourself walking the streets of Ironville, remember to tread lightly, for you may just come face to face with the horrifying specter of a headless horseman racing against time. The laborer's tragic tale spread through Ironville like a chill autumn wind, sending shivers down the spines of its denizens. Every rustling leaf, every howling gust of wind, every unexplained sound after sundown was ascribed to the restless spirit of Jacob, forever doomed to fulfill a promise he could not keep. People claimed that the atmosphere of the town changed as midnight approached. A sense of anticipation hung in the air, heavier than the iron that was mined from the town's depths. The normally tranquil woodland creatures fell silent, as if respecting the spectral rider's imminent arrival. The wind seemed to howl in despair, and the moon often hid behind thick clouds, as if it too feared witnessing the macabre spectacle. Those brave, 
or foolish, enough to venture near the ill-fated intersection of Ironville Pike and Norwood Road reported eerie encounters. They spoke of a sudden drop in temperature, an inexplicable shiver that seemed to crawl up their spine, and an uncanny feeling of being watched. And then, as the clock inched closer to midnight, the soft thumping of hooves would begin, distant at first, but steadily growing louder, more urgent. First came the outline of a horse, an ethereal creature shrouded in an unnatural, ghostly glow, a spectre of the loyal steed that had accompanied Jacob in life and death. Then came the apparition of Jacob himself, his headless form cloaked in an aura of otherworldly light, the eerie sight reflecting in the eyes of those who dared to watch. As the spectral form raced past them, witnesses reported a chilling gust of wind that seemed to carry with it the faintest hint of ale and the overwhelming scent of fear, a chilling sensory imprint of Jacob's last, fatal ride. Those who encountered the phantom rider were forever marked by the experience. It was not just the visual horror of a headless horseman that stayed with them, but the profound sadness they felt. The spectral rider seemed to carry with him a heavy, palpable sense of regret, a mournful aura that touched the hearts of the onlookers and left them with a deep sense of melancholy. Soon, the tale of Jacob and his headless spectre reached far beyond the borders of Ironville, attracting thrill-seekers and paranormal enthusiasts. Despite the fear and mystery surrounding the tale, some found in it a perverse form of entertainment, a thrilling escape from the mundanity of everyday life. They'd flock to Ironville, eager to experience the spectral phenomena, their whispers and gasps adding to the ghostly symphony that played out each midnight. Haunted by a spectral rider and cloaked in an aura of mystery, Ironville ceased to be just a bustling mining town. It became a living, breathing tale of horror and sorrow its very name sending a shiver of fear and anticipation down the spine of anyone who dared to utter it. The tale of the headless horseman of Ironville was no longer a mere local legend. It was a bone-chilling testament to the terrifying power of unfulfilled vows and the relentless grip of regret, a chilling ballad of a man forever racing against time, in a desperate quest for redemption that could never be found. Thus, Ironville stood, a silent witness to the spectral saga playing out on its roads each midnight. With each passing night, the legend of Jacob, the headless horseman, grew, his story forever etched into the very heart of Ironville, a chilling narrative forever repeating, yet forever incomplete. If you ever find yourself in the heart of Pennsylvania, remember this tale, and tread lightly, for Ironville holds a ghostly secret, a tale of a man, a horse, and a promise that echoed beyond death itself. As Ironville grew in infamy, the locals found their quiet town disrupted by a continuous influx of curious outsiders. This peculiar mix of paranormal investigators, thrill-seekers, and skeptics added a strange new dimension to the town's grim legend. But amidst the chaos and excitement, there was one constant, the spectral rider who raced down the Ironville Pike each midnight, seemingly oblivious to the growing audience for his eternal tragedy. Years turned into decades, and the memory of Jacob, the real man, a minor, a husband, a tavern frequenter, began to blur and meld with the legend of the headless horseman. His story, passed down through generations, became a staple at campfires and sleepovers, the terrifying climax to ghost tours, and the subject of countless internet forums and documentaries. Jacob's doomed promise had transformed from a personal miscalculation into a universal symbol of hubris and its catastrophic consequences. Even as the modern world encroached on Ironville, with technology permeating every aspect of life and the once robust mining industry replaced by more sophisticated enterprises, the spectral rider continued his nightly journey. The iron mines were long exhausted, the foundries silent, and the once lively tavern reduced to a dusty, historical landmark, but the phantom of Jacob carried on, bound by an ethereal chain to the Ironville of old. Researchers armed with high-tech equipment attempted to capture evidence of the spectral rider. Ghost hunters, armed with electromagnetic field detectors and infrared cameras, camped out at the intersection of Ironville Pike and Norwood Road, waiting for the phantom to make his appearance. Psychics and mediums tried to communicate with the spectral rider, seeking to understand his eternal torment and perhaps, offer some form of release. Yet, Jacob, or the entity that once was Jacob, proved elusive. No definitive evidence could be captured no direct communication established. The spectral rider seemed bound to his routine, oblivious to the efforts of the living. Yet, 
each failed attempt only served to deepen the legend. The enigma of the headless horseman became an embodiment of the unknowable, the otherworldly, the inexplicably supernatural. Over time, the tale of the headless horseman evolved further. His ghostly presence was no longer the sole claim to fame for Ironville. People began to report other unusual phenomena. Some claimed to hear a woman's weeping on windless nights, Clara, perhaps, mourning her lost husband. Others spoke of shadowy figures lurking in the corners of the old, abandoned foundry. There were tales of eerie lights, strange apparitions, and unexplained sounds. Ironville, the once bustling mining town, was gradually becoming a realm of the paranormal, a town where the veil between the living and the dead seemed unusually thin. The legend of the Headless Horseman had opened the floodgates to countless other stories, transforming the town into a magnet for ghost stories and unexplainable phenomena. The tale of Jacob had set in motion a cycle of chilling tales and horrifying sightings that showed no signs of ending. Ironville, firmly entrenched in the realm of the supernatural, had come to embody a macabre marriage of history, tragedy, and the unexplainable, forever tied to the legend of its headless horsemen. The story of Jacob continued, echoing through the years, refusing to fade into the oblivion of time. With each passing year, Ironville's reputation as a hotbed of paranormal activity only seemed to grow stronger. The small town became an integral part of America's haunted folklore, its macabre tales sending shivers down the spine of anyone who dared to listen. The spectral rider of Ironville became an enigmatic symbol, a blend of terror and fascination, etching a permanent mark in the annals of the country's paranormal history. Paranormal experts and enthusiasts began to theorize about the phenomena. Some believed that the potent mix of human emotion, regret, fear, desperation, and the town's rich iron deposits might have somehow caused Jacob's spirit to become trapped in this realm. Iron was thought to hold spiritual energies, a belief rooted in ancient folklore and myth, which added an additional layer of intrigue to Ironville's haunting saga. Others speculated that Jacob's unfulfilled vow had created a rift in the metaphysical fabric of the town, making it a beacon for other spirits. One chilling account came from a group of investigators who set up camp near the intersection of Ironville Pike and Norwood Road. As the clock approached midnight, they reported hearing a woman's voice whispering in the wind, repeating, Come home, Jacob. It's past midnight. The spectral plea, reportedly heard moments before the Phantom Rider's appearance, added a new, heartbreaking twist to the tale, suggesting that Clara's spirit might also be part of the eternal reenactment of Jacob's tragic end. Reports of spectral miners began to surface, seen working in the long-abandoned mines, their ghostly lamps flickering in the darkness. The haunting sounds of pickaxes hitting rock and muffled voices discussing the iron ore filled the air around the old mining sites. Spectral children, possibly the offspring of the miners, were heard laughing in the deserted play areas. The town's spectral population seemed to be growing, and each new apparition added to Ironville's haunting allure. In the face of these chilling developments, life went on in Ironville. The townsfolk adapted to their strange reality, accepting the spectral presences as part of their town's unique character. Life and death, reality, and the supernatural, the past and the present, all seemed to coexist in Ironville. Over time, the spectral apparitions became part of the town's identity, and the locals came to see them not as threats but as reminders of their rich history. Despite the growing interest in the town, Ironville managed to maintain its small-town charm. The residents treated their spectral cohabitants with respect, acknowledging their presence without disturbing them. They developed an unspoken pact with the spirits, they could coexist, as long as neither side crossed the boundary into the other's realm. And so, the spectral rider continued his eternal journey, the decapitated miner who had become a timeless symbol of a tragic promise. His spectral presence, as well as those of the other apparitions, served as a constant reminder of Ironville's haunting past. The echoes of their existence, trapped between reality and the beyond, reverberated through the quiet town, the tolling bells of a spectral existence, forever tied to the small town of Ironville, Pennsylvania. The tale was far from over, an enduring story that promised to continue its chilling narrative for many more years to come. With each new generation, the tale of Ironville's spectral phenomena was passed down, much like a cherished heirloom, carefully handled, ever-present, and tinged with a blend of fear and respect. 
children would huddle around the fireplace on cold autumn nights, their wide-eyed faces lit by the flickering flames as they listened to their elders recount the chilling tale of the headless horseman. Teenagers dared each other to venture out to the crossroads at midnight, with only the bravest amongst them returning with trembling voices and wide-eyed tales of spectral sightings. Meanwhile, the town saw a quiet resurgence. Old buildings were repurposed, the derelict tavern was transformed into a quaint coffee house, and the abandoned foundry became an artist's co-op. However, the past was never forgotten, it was respectfully incorporated into the new structures, the history of Ironville seeping into every restored brick and beam. Ironville was no longer just a town, it was a living monument to a bygone era, a spectral slice of history that refused to be buried. The annual Ironville Ghost Festival became a highlight on the town's calendar. The normally quiet town would come alive as visitors from all over flocked to witness the spectral phenomena. There would be ghost tours, late-night vigils at the crossroads, and dramatic reenactments of Jacob's fateful ride. Yet, despite the flurry of activities, a respectful silence would always fall over the town as midnight approached, the spectral rider's imminent arrival observed in a somber hush. Among the myriad of accounts and tales of hauntings, one particular story stood out. A story from a disbelieving visitor, a septic who came to debunk the town's famous tale. He arrived with a dismissive air, convinced he could disprove the existence of the spectral rider. Yet, as he stood at the crossroads on a cold autumn night, he found himself confronted with the spectral image of the headless horseman. The encounter, he would later say, changed his perspective on life and death. His account, filled with vivid descriptions of his terror and subsequent epiphany, became a part of the town's folklore, another chapter in the ever-evolving tale of Ironville's supernatural phenomena. The Headless Horseman had evolved from a tale of horror to a lesson in humility, a reminder of the mystery and uncertainty that surround life and death. A symbol of regret and unfulfilled promises, yes, but also of the fascinating realm of the unknown that dwells just beyond the borders of our perception. The Spectral Rider's tale was no longer just Ironville's story, it had become a part of the broader tapestry of human curiosity and our fascination with the supernatural. An exploration of our fear of the unknown, a look into the collective imagination of a town, and a chilling reminder that some stories, no matter how much time passes, refuse to fade away. As years turned into decades and decades into centuries, the tale of the Headless Horseman of Ironville remained as captivating and as mysterious as ever. As the town of Ironville grew and changed with the times, the spectral presences seemed to mirror this evolution, their behaviors becoming increasingly strange and unsettling. The cries of Clara became more anguished, filling the midnight air with a raw sorrow that chilled even the bravest hearts. The spectral miners started appearing more frequently, their ghostly lamps casting eerie, pulsating lights on the derelict mining buildings, their phantom pickaxes echoing hollowly into the night. The spectral children began to be seen, their ghostly play transforming into sinister pranks. Toys would disappear, only to reappear in impossible places. Whispers of laughter would follow those who walked alone at night, the innocence of the sound belying the dread it induced. And at the center of it all, the spectral rider, his headless figure becoming more vivid and terrifying with each passing night. The thunderous pounding of his spectral horse's hooves echoed louder and longer, the sound seemingly bouncing off the very bones of the town. The sight of the headless rider charging down the Ironville Pike struck a primal fear in the hearts of even the most skeptical observers, the horrifying manifestation of a man forever caught in his final, fatal ride. The horror escalated when a group of thrill-seekers, high on adrenaline and bravado, decided to disrupt the spectral rider's path. They positioned their car in the middle of Ironville Pike just before midnight, their headlights illuminating the misty road. As the clock struck midnight, a chilling silence descended, only to be shattered by the thunderous galloping of the spectral horse. The ghostly figure emerged from the mist, charging straight at the vehicle. The group watched in horror as the spectral rider and his horse crashed into their car, their bodies momentarily losing form as they passed through the vehicle before reforming and continuing their ride. The car's occupants were left shaken and terrified, their faces pale and their eyes wide with fear. The incident, caught on camera, was shared widely on the internet, sending shockwaves through the community and beyond. The spectral entities of Ironville, it seemed, were not mere apparitions content with repeating their actions. They reacted to the living, 
their actions becoming more pronounced and terrifying. Ironville, the quaint town with a ghostly past, was spiraling into a terrifying realm of the paranormal. The horror that unfolded each night was palpable, a chilling reminder of a town's haunted history. The once tranquil town was now shrouded in an eerie gloom. The laughter of children, the warmth of gatherings, the normalcy of everyday life, all were overshadowed by the chilling specters that roamed the streets of Ironville. The horror was far from over. The spectral entities continued their ghostly activities, each night more terrifying than the last, leaving the residents and visitors alike in a state of constant fear and dread. This was Ironville's new reality, a horrifying mix of history, tragedy, and the supernatural. In response to the increasing paranormal activity and the spreading fear, Ironville's town council decided to restrict access to Ironville Pike and Norwood Road during late night hours. It was a desperate attempt to control the situation, a bid to maintain a semblance of peace in a town being overtaken by fear. The historical charm of Ironville had now been cloaked in an unnerving aura, a town bracing itself every day for the horrors that the night would unfold. Despite the restrictions, tales of horrifying encounters kept emerging, each one more terrifying than the last. Local establishments started reporting strange occurrences. The town's beloved coffee house, once the repurposed tavern, experienced a disturbing phenomenon where patrons would suddenly feel an icy cold gust sweep past them, accompanied by the smell of old ale and horse sweat. The artist's co-op, previously the abandoned foundry, would have its artworks rearranged overnight in no discernible pattern, and artists often reported hearing the clanging of metal as if a forge was in operation. The local church, a centerpiece of Ironville, was not spared. The organ would play by itself, filling the building with melancholy tunes in the late hours of the night. Parishioners spoke of seeing the ghostly figure of a priest who served the church over a century ago, praying at the altar. Even the local school experienced incidents where old-fashioned slates and chalk would appear out of nowhere, and the ghostly sound of a classroom from another era echoed in the corridors. The Headless Horseman, the terror of Ironville, was more active than ever. He did not limit himself to his usual path anymore. He was seen galloping across the town at breakneck speed, passing through buildings and emerging on the other side, causing lights to flicker and electronic devices to malfunction. The very sight of the headless rider spread an infectious fear among the townsfolk, an unspoken dread that had taken root in their lives. The thundering hooves that were once a fascinating tale had now become a horrifying nightmare that the town was living every night. One horrifying account came from a visiting journalist who decided to spend the night in the local park, which was believed to be a new favorite haunt of the headless horseman. Armed with a camera and a spirit box, he hoped to document the spectral rider's appearance. As the clock struck midnight, he felt a sudden drop in temperature. The spirit box crackled to life, emitting the distinct sound of galloping hooves, followed by a chilling, disembodied voice that echoed, I'll be in Columbia by midnight, or I'll be in hell. Moments later, the spectral horseman emerged from the shadows, his headless figure illuminated by the park's dim lighting. His phantom horse reared up, its ghostly eyes appearing to stare directly at the journalist. Overwhelmed by fear, the journalist fainted on the spot. He was found unconscious by the park rangers the next morning, his camera still recording. The footage he captured made headlines, revealing a terrifyingly clear image of the spectral rider and his headless charge, forever cementing the nightmarish reality of Ironville's ghostly inhabitant. The fear, the horror that swept through Ironville, had given birth to a new kind of folklore, one that didn't just dwell in the past but was eerily alive in the present. Ironville, the once thriving industrial town, had transformed into a spectral hotbed, its stories of hauntings striking fear into the hearts of those who dared to listen. As the residents grappled with their new reality, they knew their town had become something more than a historical site or a tourist attraction. It was now a testament to life beyond death, an epicenter of the supernatural, where the veil between the living and the dead seemed forever torn. And at the heart of it all was the headless horseman, forever damned to his midnight ride a chilling beacon of the horror that now gripped Ironville, PA. In the face of Ironville's escalating paranormal activity, the town's council grew increasingly desperate. They reached out to paranormal experts and investigators from across the country, inviting them to uncover the mysteries of their spectral infestation. 
ghost hunting teams with names like Ecto Trackers and Spectral Sleuths descended upon Ironville, bringing with them an arsenal of ghost detecting gadgets and a palpable sense of excitement. Meanwhile, life in Ironville continued in its strange, new normal. The Ironville High School football team took to calling themselves the Headless Horsemen in a display of dark humor. The local bakery began selling ghostly delights, pastries shaped like spectral riders, while the coffee house offered a Headless Horseman special, a dark, strong brew that promised to keep you awake through the night. However, beneath the veneer of this macabre normalcy, an undercurrent of fear persisted. Parents hurried their children home before dusk, locals took detours to avoid the old mining sites, and the annual ghost festival was called off due to safety concerns. Ironville, a once thriving and peaceful town, was now living under the spectral tyranny of the Headless Horseman and his ghostly compatriots. One night, during a live televised ghost hunt at the intersection of Ironville Pike and Norwood Road, the spectral rider made a shocking appearance. As the clock struck midnight, the ghost hunting team and their viewers watched in horror as the spectral figure emerged from the shadows, his ghostly horse thundering down the road. The apparition charged straight at the team, causing a panic. Equipment was knocked over, people fell as they tried to scramble away, and the show's host screamed into the camera, it's real. The headless horseman is real. This event sent ripples of terror beyond the boundaries of Ironville, pushing the headless horseman's infamy to a national scale. The spectral rider was no longer just a local legend, he had become a nationwide phenomenon, his tale of tragedy and horror captivating a new audience. The increasing fear and the attention of the nation led the town council to make an unprecedented decision. They commissioned a large, iron statue of the Headless Horseman at the crossroads of Ironville Pike and Norwood Road, hoping that it would somehow appease the spectral rider. The statue, designed by a local artist, captured the spectral rider in his horrifying glory, headless, cloaked, riding his spectral horse at a full gallop. Unveiled during a solemn ceremony, the statue was dedicated to the memory of the unfortunate laborer whose tragic end had spiraled into a never-ending nightmare for the town. The nights that followed the unveiling saw a curious change. The cries of Clara softened, the spectral miners were less frequent, and the ghostly children's pranks turned benign. And the headless horseman, Ironville's most terrifying spectre, became less aggressive. His nightly rides continued, but he no longer galloped through the town, and sightings of him became rarer. Whether this change was due to the statue or some unknown reason, the residents of Ironville breathed a sigh of relief. Life started returning to some semblance of normalcy, the spectral presences fading into the background. The headless horsemen and the ghostly entities of Ironville were no longer just symbols of horror, they had become part of the town's identity, a chilling reminder of its haunted history. Despite the horror, the fear, and the uncertainty, Ironville and its people adapted. They lived with their spectral residents, coexisting in a town where the living and the dead shared space. And at the heart of it all was the headless horseman, the spectral rider who would forever haunt the town's memory, a chilling testament to the town's resilience in the face of the supernatural. Life in Ironville had just begun to return to some semblance of peace when tragedy struck again. One stormy night, a month after the statue's unveiling, a vicious bolt of lightning rent the sky. The people of Ironville woke up to a thunderous crash that seemed to shake the very foundations of their homes. A blinding light erupted from the center of the town, and then everything plunged into darkness. As the storm passed, people emerged from their homes, their hearts heavy with a fear they hadn't felt in weeks. They followed the path of destruction left by the lightning bolt, their journey ending at the crossroads of Ironville Pike and Norwood Road. The iron statue, once a symbol of hope, was now a twisted pile of rubble, its metallic fragments scattered across the road. The once majestic figure of the headless horseman was now unrecognizable, its destruction a chilling testament to the wrath of the spectral rider. The news of the statue's destruction spread like wildfire, reviving the fear that had started to fade. The sight of the decimated statue left the town's folk in no doubt, the headless horseman had rejected their offering. It was his clear message to them, he would not be appeased, nor would he be controlled. He was a force of the supernatural, a specter beyond human understanding. Reports of spectral activity in Ironville spiked after the incident. The headless horseman was seen galloping through the town with a newfound fury. His spectral figure seemed more terrifying 
his presence even more oppressive. The fear that his wrath inspired was palpable, a chilling reminder of the terror that Ironville had been living under. Yet, in the face of this renewed horror, the people of Ironville showed a spirit that was as unyielding as the iron ore that their town was built on. They began to collect the shattered pieces of the statue, their hearts heavy but their resolve unbroken. They had lived with the spectral writer, and they would continue to do so. Their actions were a testament to the human spirit, their resilience in the face of terror a beacon of hope in their horror-stricken town. They understood now that the headless horseman was not a being to be appeased or controlled. He was a part of their town's history, a spectral figure intertwined with their lives. And while his reign of terror continued to plague them, they were not going to let it break them. They were Ironville, a town born of iron and resilience. And they would stand against the horror, against the headless horsemen, together. For in their unity lay their strength, a strength that even the most terrifying of spectral riders could not break. In the weeks that followed the statue's destruction, a tangible anger started to simmer within the people of Ironville. Their fear, which had once held them in its paralyzing grip, had begun to morph into a fierce defiance. After all, they were a community built upon the tenacity of hard-working miners, the resiliency of industrious men and women who had shaped Ironville from the ground up. Fueled by their shared resentment, the townsfolk made a drastic decision. They resolved to dismantle the spectral rider's infamous route, the path from the tavern to the intersection of Ironville Pike and Norwood Road. They hoped that by eliminating the tangible remnants of his mortal journey, they could somehow dispel the spectral force that had haunted them for far too long. The demolition began at dawn, the rising sun casting long, ominous shadows across the doomed path. Townsfolk worked diligently, their resolve visible in every swing of their hammers, every crash of their sledge hammers. By the time dusk fell, the infamous route was reduced to a mass of broken cobblestones and upturned earth. A stark silence fell over Ironville that night, as if the town itself held its breath, waiting for the spectral rider's response. The response was not long in coming. That night, at the stroke of midnight, an earth-shattering neigh echoed through the town, followed by the phantom clatter of hooves. The spectral rider emerged from the darkness, his headless form outlined against the pale moonlight. His ghostly figure paused for a moment at the sight of the destroyed path, before unleashing a chilling wail that seemed to shake the very foundations of Ironville. The days that followed were a terrifying spectacle. The hauntings took on a fevered intensity, as if the spectral entities of Ironville were exacting their vengeance on the living. The spectral miners' figures began to swarm the streets, their spectral picks and shovels creating a haunting cacophony. Clara's spectral figure was seen more frequently, her anguished cries echoing through the night. And at the heart of it all was the headless horseman, his terrifying presence permeating every corner of Ironville. People started to see him everywhere, not just on his usual route but in their homes, at their workplaces, even at the school. His spectral horse seemed to have developed a taste for chaos, causing property damage, terrifying pets, and giving children nightmares. The rider himself became more aggressive, his spectral figure looming over anyone who dared cross his path. His spectral form was seen standing at the foot of people's beds, watching them with his non-existent eyes, filling their dreams with terror. Ironville was once again gripped by fear, its every corner echoing with the whispers of its spectral inhabitants. But amid the escalating horror, the people held on to their resolve. They had withstood the spectral rider's wrath before, and they would do so again. For they were Ironville, a town of resilience, a town that would not bow down to spectral tyranny. They had chosen to face their fears head-on, and they would stand their ground, no matter what. After all, they were living in a reality where their town's past and present had intermingled, a terrifying dance between the spectral and the mortal. Rage and frustration pulsed through Ironville's citizens like a live current. Their attempt to dismantle the spectral rider's route, which they had hoped would mitigate the haunting, had instead escalated the paranormal activity in town to an unbearable degree. In this desperate time, the townsfolk decided to resort to drastic measures once again. They set their sights on the old, dilapidated house where the laborer had once lived with his wife. It had long been abandoned, its decrepit form a chilling reminder of the town's haunted past. In the early evening, a crowd gathered before the dilapidated house. 
They watched as the town's mayor, a stout man with a determined look in his eyes, raised a lit torch into the air. His voice carried clearly in the cold, crisp air as he addressed his people. We have lived under the shadow of this spectral tyrant for far too long, he began, his voice resounding through the silent crowd. Tonight, we sever this phantom's ties to our town. Tonight, we burn away our past to safeguard our future. With a solemn nod, he lowered the torch towards the dry, wooden structure. The flame caught immediately, spreading across the old wood like a fiery serpent. In moments, the entire house was ablaze a burning beacon against the backdrop of the darkening sky. As the fire consumed the house, a sudden chill swept through the town. The air seemed to thicken, a sense of dread gripping the hearts of the town's folk. A spectral wind whipped through the streets, and the crackling of the flames was suddenly drowned out by an otherworldly wail that filled the air. The town's folk watched in horror as the spectral rider emerged from the heart of the flames, his ghostly horse rearing up against the fiery backdrop. His haunting cry echoed through the night as his once home was consumed by the inferno. In the days that followed, Ironville fell under a spectral siege. The spectral miners' hauntings grew violent, their spectral tools smashing windows and doors. Clara's cries became a constant backdrop to life in town, her spectral presence appearing at every corner. The spectral children's innocent pranks morphed into terrifying antics, their ghostly giggles sending shivers down the spines of the town's folk. Yet, it was the wrath of the headless horseman that cast the darkest shadow over Ironville. His spectral figure was seen more frequently, his terrifying presence a constant reminder of the anger that the townsfolk's actions had incited. The house's destruction had not dispelled the spectral rider, it had only fanned the flames of his fury. The town was his domain, and he would not be chased away. His reign of terror continued serving as a chilling reminder that the spectral and the living were irrevocably bound together in Ironville. But the townsfolk, battered yet unbroken, braced themselves for the fight. They had ignited the battle, and they would see it through to the end. The destruction of the spectral rider's former home had only served to incite his wrath further. The townsfolk, driven to desperation, decided to resort to one final, drastic measure, they would desecrate the rider's grave. They reasoned that if the headless horseman's spectral form was tied to his mortal remains, then disturbing his final resting place might break that link and bring an end to the haunting. On a moonless night, a small group of townsfolk gathered at the old Ironville Cemetery, their faces set in grim determination. Armed with shovels and pickaxes, they made their way towards a remote corner of the graveyard where the rider's tombstone, weather-beaten and half-sunk into the ground, stood. A chilling wind seemed to blow across the graveyard as they approached the grave, but they steeled themselves and began their task. They dug deep into the earth, their hearts heavy with a grim resolve. The grave was finally opened, revealing an old, wooden coffin. With a collective breath, they lifted the lid, exposing the skeletal remains of the rider. His skull was notably absent, a haunting reminder of his gruesome fate. In their rage and desperation, they smashed the coffin, scattering the bones. The rider's mortal remains were finally desecrated, his once peaceful resting place now a site of chaos and destruction. As they completed their grim task, an unearthly wail echoed through the night, freezing the blood in their veins. The spectral rider, his figure glowing in an ominous light, appeared before them. His spectral horse reared, its ghostly neigh echoing through the graveyard. His headless figure turned towards the desecrated grave, then towards the townsfolk, his rage palpable. In the days that followed, Ironville was subjected to an unimaginable reign of terror. The spectral entities of Ironville seemed to echo the rider's wrath, their haunting taking on a vicious edge. The spectral miners' hauntings became more destructive, their ghostly tools causing more havoc. Clara's wails grew louder, her spectral form appearing more frequently. Yet, it was the headless horseman who proved to be the most terrifying. His spectral form was seen at all hours, his headless figure a constant presence. His spectral horse trampled through the town, causing mayhem and destruction. Ironville was trapped in a cycle of fear and horror, its spectral past and its living present locked in a terrifying dance. The townsfolk, their actions having incited the spectral wrath, found themselves grappling with a terror beyond their wildest imagination. 
their desperation had only served to bind them more tightly to their spectral history, their town a chilling testament to a past that refused to be forgotten. The spectral siege of Ironville showed no signs of abating. Each passing day was marked by increased paranormal activity, the spectral entities making their wrath known through a terrifying spectacle of hauntings. Yet, it was the spectral riders' ceaseless reign of terror that had pushed the townsfolk to their breaking point. The once fearful and desperate community was now consumed by a righteous anger, their fear transmuted into a burning desire for liberation. At the heart of this new wave of defiance was a group of local hunters and farmers, hardened men and women who had decided that enough was enough. They had seen their community reduced to a haunted shell, their friends and families living in perpetual fear. Now, they were ready to fight back. Armed with their hunting rifles, they patrolled the streets of Ironville, keeping a watchful eye for the spectral rider. Their determination seemed to infuse the entire town, their once hushed whispers now loud proclamations of defiance. The confrontation happened one fateful night. The spectral rider, his ghostly figure glowing ominously, appeared on his spectral horse. His chilling presence seemed to fill the town, his spectral figure a stark contrast against the dark night sky. But this time, the townsfolk were ready. A volley of gunfire rang out, bullets whistling through the air as they targeted the spectral rider. Yet, the bullets passed through the spectral figure without causing any harm, the ghostly form unscathed. The rider let out a chilling wail, the spectral horse rearing up on its hind legs, its ghostly neigh piercing the night. Despite their initial shock, the townsfolk did not back down. They kept firing, their gunshots a testament to their unyielding determination. But their efforts proved futile, the spectral rider remained unaffected, his terrifying reign continuing unabated. The townsfolk's actions had done little to dispel the spectral rider. Instead, they had sparked a new wave of spectral fury. Ironville was once again plunged into a state of chaos, its streets echoing with the wails of its spectral inhabitants. The townsfolk, their attempts to fight back proving fruitless, found themselves trapped in a horrifying reality where the living and the spectral were engaged in a terrifying dance of fear and defiance. Their once quiet town had become a battlefield, a chilling testament to a past that refused to remain buried. Despite the continued spectral onslaught, a peculiar transformation began to take place within the people of Ironville. The townsfolk, initially gripped by fear and terror, had slowly begun to harden against the hauntings. Their fear transformed into a hardened resilience, their terror into a robust defiance. They no longer cowered at the sight of the spectral rider. Instead, they met his terrifying apparition with a hardened resolve, their faces set in grim defiance. The spectral figure that once filled their hearts with fear was now a symbol of their own perseverance. The spectral rider had become a pathetic parody in their eyes a reflection of a foolish man who had met an unfortunate end due to his own recklessness. Look, it's the bitch boy, someone would yell when the spectral rider would appear. The phrase quickly caught on, becoming a term of derision among the townsfolk. Bitch made, another would shout, and the others would erupt into laughter. Their voices echoed in the night, a sharp contrast against the chilling presence of the spectral rider. Their mockery did not end there. Every appearance of the spectral rider was met with a wave of insults and jeers. The townsfolk went as far as reenacting the rider's fateful ride, their laughter echoing through the night as they mimicked the rider's drunken gallop. This new attitude seemed to confound the spectral rider. His terrifying wails began to wane, his spectral appearances becoming less frequent. His reign of terror seemed to falter, his spectral figure diminishing under the weight of the town's newfound defiance. The townsfolk's resilience had done what their guns and anger couldn't. The spectral rider, once a symbol of their fears, had become a testament to their unyielding spirit. Their defiance had sparked a new dawn in Ironville, their mockery a powerful weapon against their spectral past. But the battle was far from over. The spectral entities that haunted Ironville still lingered, their ghostly forms a constant reminder of the town's spectral history. Yet, the townsfolk were ready. Their defiance had ignited a beacon of hope in their hearts, their laughter echoing in the night as they prepared for their next spectral confrontation. Ironville, once gripped by fear and terror, had become a symbol of human resilience. The spectral hauntings had transformed the town into a battlefield where the living and the spectral were locked in a defiant dance. The townsfolk, 
their spirits unbroken, were ready to face whatever their spectral past threw at them. After all, they were humans, creatures of habit and determination, ready to fight till the very end. In a bold act of defiance, the townsfolk of Ironville turned to public art to further their mockery of the spectral writer. Ironville, with its historic charm and picturesque streets, had always been a haven for artists. Now, its walls and alleyways became the canvas for a vibrant display of public art, each piece a derisive caricature of the spectral writer. Murals began to appear overnight, the spectral writer depicted in a variety of humorous and demeaning situations. In one, he was shown slumped over his horse, a mug of ale in his hand and a befuddled expression on his headless body. In another, he was depicted desperately chasing after his lost head, a scene that caused passers-by to erupt in laughter. Street artists didn't hold back, their artwork imbued with biting sarcasm and outright ridicule. Sculptures crafted from scrap iron and other materials appeared, mocking statues of the headless horseman, sometimes with a chicken or a pumpkin in place of the missing head. Every piece of art was a jab at the spectral rider, a visual representation of the townsfolk's refusal to be haunted by the spectral figure. The public art not only served as a constant reminder of the town's resilience but also seemed to have a dampening effect on the spectral hauntings. As the murals and sculptures began to populate the town, the spectral rider's appearances became even less frequent. His spectral figure, once a terrifying presence in Ironville, seemed to shrink under the weight of the town's mockery. The townsfolk's audacity sparked a sense of unity among them, their shared defiance against their spectral past bringing them closer. The public art became a symbol of their collective resilience, their refusal to be haunted by their spectral past echoing through every mural and sculpture. Yet, Ironville remained a town with a spectral history. The spectral entities that had once terrified the townsfolk still lingered. However, the town's newfound defiance had ignited a spark of hope in their hearts. Their laughter echoed through the streets, their public art a testament to their unyielding spirit. Ironville, once a haunted town, had become a beacon of human resilience. Its spectral past was now a part of its vibrant present, its streets a testament to the indomitable spirit of its townsfolk. Their laughter echoed through the town, their public art a vibrant testament to their resilience. The spectral rider, once a terrifying figure, had become a symbol of their defiance, his spectral presence a constant reminder of their refusal to be haunted by their spectral past. The transformation that gripped Ironville was profound. The townsfolk had moved from a place of fear to a realm of indifference. It seemed as though the spectral rider had lost all his horrifying allure, his presence no longer causing hearts to race or blood to run cold. His spectral figure would materialize in the still of the night, his headless form imposing on the landscape of Ironville. He would let out a terrifying wail, his spectral horse letting out a ghostly neigh, the chilling sounds meant to strike fear into the hearts of the townsfolk. Yet they would be met with dismissive shrugs and disinterested gazes. Shut up, you headless oaf, a brave resident would yell, nonchalantly flipping a dismissive hand in the direction of the spectral rider. Another resident might add, show some dignity, man. Even in death, you're an embarrassment. Children, too, unafraid of the spectral figure, would shout, hey, you. Bitch boy. Can't you find somewhere else to be pathetic? The spectral rider, once the source of chilling fear, was now subjected to the casual indifference of the town's folk. His spectral wails no longer stirred the people of Ironville, his ghostly appearances causing nothing more than minor interruptions. The once fearful residents of Ironville had turned the tables on their spectral tormentor. Their apathy towards the spectral rider seemed to drain him of his once terrifying power. His spectral figure began to wane, his ghostly appearances becoming less frequent. Ironville had gone from a town gripped by fear to a community united in their resilience. The spectral entities that had once haunted them had become a part of their daily life, their spectral past now a source of strength. Through their defiance, the townsfolk had reclaimed their town. They had shown that even in the face of a terrifying past, the human spirit could rise above it all. Their laughter echoed through the streets, their indifference towards the spectral rider a testament to their unyielding resilience. Ironville was no longer a haunted town, it was a beacon of human determination, a testament to the power of the human spirit. In a final act of defiance and a dose of collective humor, 
the Ironville Town Council came up with an idea that had the town's folk in stitches. They passed a tongue-in-cheek ordinance that effectively banned horses from the town centre, citing spectral disturbances as the primary reason. No horse shall be ridden, paraded, or otherwise guided through the streets of Ironville between the hours of sunset and sunrise, due to the likelihood of spectral misunderstandings, the notice read, pinned up on the town bulletin board and drawing chuckles from passers-by. This playful action spread across the town like wildfire, causing laughter to ripple through the streets of Ironville. Even those who depended on horses for work found the humor in the situation and willingly complied, deciding to leave their equine companions at home after sundown. Whenever the spectral rider made his appearance, townsfolk would call out and tease him, sorry, no horses allowed here, or didn't you read the notice? Horses are banned. The townsfolk found this act amusing, their collective laughter ringing out in the face of the once terrifying spectre. The spectral rider's response to this new ordinance was notable. His appearances seemed to dwindle even further, and the ethereal hoofbeats that once echoed chillingly through the town were heard less frequently. The rider, it seemed, had been affected by the townsfolk's mockery and the symbolic ban on his preferred mode of transport. Once again, the people of Ironville had found a way to diminish the power of their spectral tormentor, this time through a mix of humor and unity. The resilient spirit of Ironville continued to shine, a beacon of determination and defiance in the face of a haunting past. Their laughter, now often heard instead of terrified screams, echoed through the town as a testament to their resilience and collective strength. Their mockery of the spectral rider was not just a means of coping, but a symbol of their refusal to be ruled by fear. Even in the face of spectral torment, the people of Ironville had found a way to stand strong, their shared humor and courage forming the heart of their resilient community. The final stroke of Ironville's defiance was an act so audacious that it sent shockwaves of laughter through the town. The townsfolk decided to create a mock grave for the spectral rider, a place to symbolically bury the fear he had instilled in them for so long. They chose a spot at the very center of the town, a public square visible to all passers-by. Etched on a large, ornately carved slab of stone were the words. Here lies our headless bitch boy. Forever lost to ale, ever a nuisance. May he find rest in peace. And in hell find his lost head. The epitaph was a poignant mixture of sarcasm and contempt, capturing the town's collective sentiment towards their spectral pest. Below the headstone, a small hole was dug and in it was placed a mock head, a carved pumpkin with a comical face. The unveiling of the fake grave was met with roaring laughter from the town's folk. There was a joyous atmosphere as they gathered around it, some even bringing bouquets of vegetables instead of flowers, a further slight to their spectral nemesis. The audacity of their act was a testament to the town's collective courage and spirit. In the following days, the spectral rider's hauntings became even rarer. It seemed as though the collective will and laughter of the town's folk had banished him from the streets of Ironville. His spectral figure, once a terrifying sight, had been reduced to a mock figure, a caricature of his former self. Through their acts of defiance and humor, the town's folk of Ironville had successfully stripped their spectral tormentor of his power over them. The laughter that now filled the town was a testament to their resilience, a tribute to their collective strength in the face of their spectral past. The people of Ironville had reclaimed their town, transforming it from a place of fear to a beacon of courage and resilience. To top off their string of defiant acts, the townsfolk of Ironville decided to add a final touch to the spectral rider's mock grave. They erected a large wooden sign right above the grave, bearing the words, Free Public Restroom, in bold, glaring letters. The townsfolk found the act uproariously funny, their laughter filling the streets of Ironville. To them, it was a symbol of their triumph over their spectral tormentor, a sign that they had well and truly moved on from the days when they were terrified of the headless rider. It was an assertion that the rider held no power over them, a symbol of the town's spirit of unity and defiance. In the days that followed, the spectral rider's apparitions all but ceased. It was as though the town's acts of defiance, their refusal to be terrorized, had driven away the specter. The town's folk of Ironville reveled in their victory, their laughter echoing through the town, a testament to their resilience and strength. Ironville had transformed from a place of fear to a community bound by humor, unity, and courage. The spectral rider, once a source of terror, was now nothing more than a source of amusement, 
a symbol of a past that the town had overcome. The people of Ironville had successfully banished their spectral past, their shared laughter ringing out as a testament to their collective strength and resilience. In the spirit of their newfound audacity, the townsfolk decided to take their act of defiance a step further. They commissioned a new road to be built where the old Ironville Pike once lay. The construction project was a massive undertaking, requiring the removal of many of the old trees that lined the path. Every tree that was cut down was seen as a blow to the spectral rider, a further sign of their disregard for his past influence. Once the road was completed, it was a wide, clear and flat stretch of asphalt, a stark contrast to the once shadowy and ominous path that it used to be. Along the road, the townsfolk erected signs at regular intervals, each carrying a sarcastic message that read, For the salty spectre, here's your clear path. Sorry it took us since the 1800s. Each sign was greeted with laughter by the townsfolk. Their humor was infectious, spreading throughout the town like a beacon of resilience. The spectral rider, once a source of fear and dread, was now the subject of community-wide ridicule. With the construction of the new road and the sarcastic signs, the townsfolk had effectively banished the memory of their spectral tormentor. Their laughter echoed through the town, replacing the once chilling sounds of the spectral rider. The townsfolk of Ironville had reclaimed their town. Their collective act of defiance had proven to be their greatest strength, turning the tables on their spectral past. The new road served as a testament to their resilience, a symbol of the town's unyielding spirit. Through their audacity, humor and unity, the people of Ironville had turned their spectral past into a source of communal strength and laughter. As the years passed, Ironville's audacious spirit and resilience continued to flourish. The tale of their spectral tormentor and their collective triumph over him became an integral part of the town's history. With each new generation, the story was retold, keeping the memory of the spectral rider alive, not as a source of fear, but as a symbol of their town's strength and unity. In an unexpected twist of tradition and mockery, the townsfolk started a new annual event, a public reenactment of the spectral rider's tale. The event quickly gained popularity and became one of the town's most anticipated celebrations. Locals would gather in Ironville's main square, all clad in festive attire. A member of the community, usually a well-respected elder or a prominent figure, would be chosen to play the spectral rider. They would dress up in tattered clothing and, with a pumpkin as a stand-in for the missing head, would ride a horse, or more often, a bicycle to honor the horse-riding ban, down the modern Ironville Pike. The crowd would cheer and jeer at the reenactment, their laughter filling the air as they watched the symbolic spectral rider race down the road. Once the reenactment was done, the town would erupt into a night of merriment, with music, dancing, and a community feast. The spectral rider's tale, once a source of terror, had been transformed into a celebration of the town's courage and unity. The reenactments served as a reminder of Ironville's history, a testament to the town's spirit, and a symbol of the town's defiance against fear. The people of Ironville had turned their spectral past into a cherished tradition, their shared laughter echoing through the town as a symbol of their collective resilience. And so, Ironville's tale of resilience, defiance, and laughter echoed through the years, a testament to the town's collective spirit and strength. The spectral rider, once a source of fear and terror, had been reduced to a figure of ridicule and merriment, a symbol of the town's past that they had overcome. The townsfolk had taken their fear, confronted it head-on, and turned it into a source of unity and pride. The tale of the spectral rider and their triumphant defiance had become a part of Ironville's legacy, passed down from generation to generation. It was a story of courage, of audacity, and of a community standing together in the face of fear. In the end, Ironville was no longer a town haunted by a spectral past, but a beacon of resilience, a testament to the power of unity and laughter. The tale of the spectral rider, once a chilling legend, had been transformed into a beloved tradition, a symbol of the town's triumph over their past. And as the years passed, Ironville continued to flourish, their shared laughter echoing through the streets, a symbol of their collective strength, resilience, and triumph. The End